Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile video, and this time it is going to be the deck list that I took to the 200th YCS this past weekend in Columbus, Ohio. I played World Chalice, it was a deck that I wanted to play, because it's the deck that I have the most fun with. It's a combo deck that's in certain areas a little bit more resilient than Goki, although it is less consistent overall, at least in theory. Goki is more consistent than this deck, but Goki has a lot of key points that can be stopped by a single hand trap, whereas this deck at least seems to give the illusion of having a lot more resiliency in it while doing the exact same sort of plays of Gumblaring for four and all that sort of stuff. So, uh, this mat is amazing. I love this mat, by the way. This is the Gold Sark mat that you got for pre-registering. Uh, you got it plus a, uh, a field center that was the new, fri uh, new prize card, the new Chaos Emperor Dragon prize card. Uh, I, I just absolutely love this mat. This mat is gorgeous. You know it says something about how good a mat looks when you see people actively playing on it at the event. But anyway, I decided to play World Chalice this weekend. Uh, it was a deck that I put a lot of theory into for the event. Uh, the only losses that I took, I played all of day one. I played all nine rounds of day one, uh, taking my third loss in round nine. But the only losses I took the entire event were to my own mistakes because I hadn't been playing Yu-Gi-Oh! in a competitive setting in a long time. And so I had to take some time to get my player senses back into uh, into sort of whack. Basically, I lost a lot in time. <laughs> I lost all three of my matches to time-related shenanigans, whether it was forcing me to make an inoptimal play when I should have just committed to the play that I wanted to make, or if it was just outright losing in time in general. Uh, but so, this is the list that I played. Uh, it is a 42 card main deck. Uh, I felt like that was a, a good number. I didn't really feel like cutting it down to 40 for any reason, uh, especially considering like the cards that I'm playing in here. But three World Legacy World Chalice, three Lee the World Chalice Fairy, and two World Chalice Guard Dragon. This is the entirety of the World Chalice lineup in the main deck. I'm playing no World Chalice Vanilla, or World Chalice Normal Monster, rather. Uh, I found out that like through a bunch of the combo sequences, you can just play a second Guard Dragon, and not only does it make it better for the combo sequencing in some of the cases, because you're able to banish this and still have Guard Dragon as like a level 1 uh, to do like Link Kribo plays with, or to just um, just like have uh, as access further uh, down the uh, game line, like it, during the next turn you can use Guard Dragon again. Uh, basically, there's no need for a World Chalice Vanilla, because all of your starter cards that allow you to play the deck uh, get you access into a Vanilla anyway, in the form of the Shine Balls, or the uh, or the Brilliant Fusion, or the Undyne Package, or whatever. So, there was really no reason to play a Vanilla, and I just chose to play another card that's also just really good against Striker. If you're going second against Striker, and they make a Shizuku board pointing at your thing, uh, with Widow Anchor set, you can just summon Venus or whatever in the zone that Shizuku is pointing to, and then you've got this in your hand as a hand trap to protect from uh, Widow Anchors. So, this was just more relevant to me over the course of the weekend. But, anyway... Carrying on uh, three copies of the Agent of Creation Venus and three copies of the Mystical Shine Ball. Uh, obviously, like the best starters and the most, the single-handedly like most powerful card in this entire deck. Uh, Venus by itself is a Gumblar for four, draw two to three, play off an Ingirsu, uh, and then like sets up uh, Eva searching heralds and stuff with the Gumblar play. So like that's really powerful. And then Venus plus like any monster in your hand. Uh, is also like a Gumbar for four plus Trigate Wizard, and it's very easy to expand upon. Like getting access to four monsters for free, basically off of Venus to start your plays, are obviously really good. And then carrying on with more starters, three copies of Genix Undyne, uh, and then the one copy of Christian Rosenix, and the one copy of Genix Controller to go along with it. This essentially is like another Venus for the deck. Uh, it can access Venus through a combo that I did a video on yesterday, uh, summoning Venus off Summon Sorceress and then bouncing it to your hand. Uh, off of uh, Firewall and then summoning it. Uh, but basically, like even if you're not factoring that into the uh, picture, this is just another card that is a good starter card for you because it's a normal summon. You send Rosenix, add controller to your hand, you banish Rosenix for a token, the token becomes Link Spider, and then you Link Spider special controller out of your hand, and controller becomes Imduk. So Undyne is a very good starter card for allowing you to step up into your plays in place of Venus. It's one less monster, being three monsters instead of four, like Venus provides, but it's still very good. It's very, very much a quality starter that I'm actually just really glad is in the deck because it makes the deck overall a lot more potent and consistent in its good openings. But one copy of Gen uh, Gym Knight Garnet uh, for the Brilliant Fusion. I do not play Lazuli because, uh, again, like I'm since I'm not playing the World Chalice Vanilla, you need access to Garnet uh, off the Brilliant Fusion because of the fact that it's a vanilla that you put in your grave. So, like, say you open like Brilliant Fusion, uh, like Brilliant Fusion World Legacy World Chalice, or like some form of those plays. You need to be able to put a vanilla in your grave in order for Guard Dragon to banish and bring back a vanilla. 
And so Garnet is just more important there. And also it's just less of a brick than Lazuli is. Uh, if you draw Garnet, you can at least like do like Link Spider or Emduk with it. Whereas Lazuli only goes into Link Kribo, and that's usually not very valuable. Uh, and then carrying on, uh, two copies of Exodius, the Ultimate Forbidden Lord. I chose to play this uh, at two this weekend. A lot of people have cut this from their lists. Uh, I was testing one for a while. I tested three at one point. Uh, I just sort of settled in on two. I could easily go back to one. I could see myself doing it. But I basically wanted this deck to have a hard reset button for the uh, like follow-up after like Gumblaring for four. If your opponent clears your board, does like some sort of shenanigans to like get out of the play, you want a hard reset button. And also this is like just a really good extender as well. Uh, as well as with like the Undyne plays being able to search Venus essentially, this becomes a lot more easy to drop because then all of a sudden all of almost all of your starting card play combinations yield this card being very good to you. Uh, because you're able to like use Undyne plus World Legacy, World Chalice, or Brilliant Fusion to go into a Venus, and then you're able to drop this after you set up your board to an extent where you're still able to Gumblar for four effectively. Or you've got like plays where like Brilliant Fusion gets you into like a Brilliant Fusion Lee play, or Brilliant Fusion World Legacy, World Chalice gets you into Venus. You're able to do that, and then you're able to drop Exodius. Venus by itself, obviously. Like Exodius just became really powerful with all the different ways this deck has to access Venus in my opinion. And so it's a card that I really, really liked the value of, of just being able to like drop this card from your hand, either turn one to make your board bigger, or just having it in your hand for turn three when you've gumblard them, but they've somehow broken out of it, like maybe like a Kaiju over Trigate plus Engage or something like that. Uh, just a way to, a way to deal with threats of losing the game by being out of resources, by just putting everything back. Uh, but, like, this deck is really cool because it, like, plays the resource game really well on turn three between either hard drawing this or having access to World Legacy Succession for, like, either Firewall or Ningirsu. Uh, the deck plays very well under those circumstances anyway, but this just makes it a bit better. But, carrying on, one copy of Eva and two copies of Herald of Orange Light. Uh, these cards are actually pretty underwhelming in my eyes. I might still play Eva. I'm unsure about these cards. Uh, these cards didn't really seem to do that much. Uh, they're basically, like, this is just, like... Seems like it's just the extra copy of Lee to search because when you Eva, you can only search for one Lee. You have to search different names, so you usually search for like Lee plus Harold, and you very rarely leave this online. Although it does happen in grind game scenarios, uh, but it's usually not like the key point of what you're doing. You're usually using the monster that you uh, search next to Lee, either this or like any other level two or lower light fairy, as a combo extender. Or you're just discarding it for Lee uh, for the combo sequence. Uh, but it does make a lot of your uh, your Gumblar plays a lot easier to do because this is obviously a level 1, so you can tribute it for Link Karibo. Uh, and then um, you get to search like Harold and Lee's to be extra discards for Gumblar. It's just, I was very underwhelmed by specifically the Heralds. Unsure if I would play them again. Uh, like, rather than just playing something like maybe like Trickstar Lily Bells. Uh, or um, or maybe just one of this and a Trickstar Lily Bell just to be like an extra extender, who knows. Uh, unsure, but I did really like the Eva just simply because of the Summon Sorceress plays you can do, uh, or just sending it off a late Brilliant Fusion, but otherwise it was just eh. <laughs> These cards were eh. Uh, but then carrying on, uh, I only made two Hand Traps, I made two Ash Blossom and Joy Spring. Uh, you could easily just not play these. The reason that I chose to main them, though, was not really for going second. Although, obviously, if, if it comes up, it is good going second against, like, Goki or against, like, Sky Striker or something like that. This was mainly something that I wanted in my hand for uh, mainly going second against, like, Trickstar Reincarnation. That was definitely something I was kind of scared of because I saw a lot of people testing Trickstar for this event. But mainly, I want this to be a card that I could draw into off of my going first play with, like, Ninjirsu and stuff. So then I can Gumblar my opponent for four and try to set up like live Trigate or just keep this in my hand and have this as a card that makes it to where I don't necessarily have to be forced to go into Trigate Wizard to like negate an engage or something uh, was mainly the reason behind these. Uh, I just wanted to have a card that I could draw into that would be a card that is a single use just like stop a card after I've already taken four cards away from my opponent. Um, you could choose to not play them, uh, but another reason why these kind of just made their way into the main deck was because I wanted my side deck to essentially be like 17 cards, and so I just moved the two Ash Blossoms out of my side and into the main. But So that's 27 monsters. Uh, for the spells, I played three Magical Midbreaker Field in the main deck, making Venus uh, immune to literally everything, and making Summon Sorceress immune to Ghost Ogres and all that sort of stuff is uh, very powerful. Uh, these, this card is just such a free feeling. When you play this card, you feel so free. Uh, it's obviously really good going second against Sky Striker because they have Widow Anchors and stuff set, or Strikes or whatever. You can just play it, and then you summon Venus, uh, and like then they literally can't do anything to you. They can negate its effect with something. 
uh, in the single instance like Gamma or Strike or w something like that, but like they're not going to be able to get it off the field because you can't destroy it, and thusly you're uh, really, really good because you just get to play Venus again. You need to use its effect again. Uh, two Call by the Grave because it is only at two. If I could play three, I definitely would. Uh, but then carrying on, another starter card is a Triple Brilliant Fusion and then sort of a starter slash extender Transmodify at two. Uh, I do really like this card. I really like opening this with Venus. Uh, I like opening it with like Brilliant Fusion. I like opening it a lot. Uh, it doesn't really seem to get Ashed that much anymore. It's very it's very easy for you to play around Ash as well with this deck. Uh, you can easily just like shotgun Brilliant. If your hand is like Brilliant Fusion Lee Transmodify or Brilliant Fusion like a Shine Ball Transmodify, whatever something that makes the Transmodify live that you can normal summon and like Brilliant Fusion or just like a card that's like super valuable like uh, Genix Undyne or something that you could actually utilize. Uh, you could easily bait Ash with those other cards, and then just play the Transmodify uh, after, like, Brilliant gets Ashed or whatever. Like, it's very easy for you to do, but I just wanted to see Venus more often. And like I said, I like opening Transmodify with Venus, because then you just Transmodify the Eva off the Summon Sorceress, and then that gets Lee, and then it's like, it becomes a combo in itself. Uh, so, like, it's it's something really nice. I really, I really like this. I kind of wanted to play the third but it too seemed fine, especially with Undyne being able to access Venus from your deck off of certain combo strings. Uh, I just felt like three would be too many. But for one of Soul Charge, World Legacy Succession, and Monster Reborn, I'm not playing Foolish because it's not necessarily even that good of a starter card. Um, it was This was something that I was playing around with the thought of, of just not playing Foolish, uh, and then I saw somebody that I actually have a lot of like uh, mutual respect for um, in terms of like the way their thought process is sort of naturally align with my own despite the fact that we never really talk about this deck together in like a in like an extended amount of time uh he wasn't playing foolish in his list either uh that i saw and i was like hmm very interesting i've been i've been testing not playing foolish for a little while and uh you're also not playing foolish and so it's just one of those cards that doesn't really make your hands that much better your deck your deck already had to have uh your hands jesus your hand already had to consist of like a like superior like starter card like Venus or Undyne for Foolish to be that good anyway. Um, if you open Brilliant Fusion Foolish, uh, that's kind of a play as well, but it's not really an optimal one. Uh, but it is still a play. But it's just like one of those things where like I didn't want to build my deck around suboptimal plays. I just wanted to build my deck around making the best plays I can do better. Um, and like I didn't really miss the Foolish. I didn't miss the Foolish at all. Like usually like. The most Foolish was doing in testing as of recently was like sending Eva later in the turn if I had already used Brilliant Fusion or whatever. Um, like it just, it didn't really matter much considering what the deck had already performed. But then the last two cards in the deck are two copies of the Fam Knights of Shade Brigandine. Uh, this card is just a really good extender. It's just a free Imduk that you just set and summon. Uh, so it's just really good. Uh, it makes a lot of uh, the weirder plays work. Uh, just having a card like this. It's also a card you could use to trigger Gumblar on your opponent's draw phase uh, if you want to just like set this and hold it. If you can't get the Link Karibo or you can't get a level 1 on the field for some reason. Uh, overall, I just really like this card. It lets you play through the Disruption as well. So, like, if your Venus gets Impermanence and you have, like, a hand of, like, a World Legacy card, like, Lee or World Legacy World Chalice plus this, like, that lets you play through the uh, the Impermanence or the whatever on Lee. Or on, not, not on Lee, on Venus. It lets you play through it uh, and, like, revive it with Orum and then keep going. Uh, it's a very it's a very interesting card. I really like it. Some people have cut it, but it's just one of those things where it's just a free monster to special summon, which makes a lot of your plays work. Like uh, Lee by like Venus by itself. Um, if you add this into the mix, like it just makes the play better because it allows you to actually like normal summon again. Because there's a, a key point in the combo where you needed Goblin for just Venus, um, and so the combo got infinitely worse after the ban list hit. But like that card fixes it. So things to consider. But anyway, extra deck. Three copies of Imduk, one copy of Link Karibo, and one copy of Link Spider for Link 1s. For Link 2s, one Reproducus, one Eve the World Child's Priestess, one Nightmare Phoenix. I chose to run this over Cerberus. Uh, you could really interchange it around. You could either... Uh, just All that it changes is what side of the board you're going to be working on with your play structures um, to where this points at Firewall during your turn 1 plays. Uh, but I felt like Phoenix was more... Um, was more uh, viable for the weekend uh, than Cerberus because I felt like I would be playing against a lot of strikers and back row decks. And this deck can realistically out monsters pretty well anyway with Ngirsu. Uh, but Orum, and that's all the Link 2s. And then I played Trigate Wizard. 
Summon Sorceress and Angirsu for Link 3s, and then for Link 4s, Firewall and Topologic Gumblar Dragon. It's very easy for you to Gumblar your opponent for 4 with this deck, uh, so it just seemed pretty standard to do it. Like, without playing the Kaijus, the deck needs like a win condition that's more consistent and can be accessed in the extra deck, and usually almost every play the deck does involving Venus at least Gumblars for 4 with a live Firewall left over, or goes Gumblar for 4 Trigate Wizard, so that's really good. And then obviously the Brilliant Fusion target in the form of Gym Knight, Seraph Knight. And then I have a side deck. A side deck, a side deck, a side deck. Uh, basically, I side decked like 12 cards for this event. I had a 15 card side deck, but the other cards didn't come in. Um, so I side decked two Kyoto Waterfronts and two Gamma Seals. I sided the two Gamma Seals to go second against Goki and Striker and stuff like that. Um, I sided the Waterfronts because I was scared of potentially playing against like a Danger deck or like BA or something where Gumblar isn't that good. Um, so I could swap these in in place of like the Midbreaker Fields. Um, when going first and just drop a Gamma Seal. Uh, never put them in. Uh, even against matchups that I thought Gumblar would be uh, pretty subpar against, I ended up just not Gumblaring them and just making a huge board of like Trigate, Firewall Bouncing 2, a World Legacy World Chalice on the field to be a tribute for a Negate, and like Herald of Orange Lights in my hand. Um, and that just was basically good enough to win the matchup anyway. Uh, so like these just never really, these never came in, these did. Uh, the other card that I didn't side at all was Gandor X, the Dragon of Destruction. Now, the theory behind this was, if I'm going into time in Game 3, going first, I side this card in, and you're able to make Venus plus any extender, uh, make Imduk under Summon Sorceress, summon this out of your deck, and then you're able to link away with your stuff, and you're able to make Firewall Dragon, bounce this to your hand, special summon it, and then this destroys your board, the Firewall Dragon is the biggest thing you have out. Your opponent takes 2,500 damage, and you win in time. That was the theory. What I didn't realize is that all of my Game 3s were going to be starting with 15 minutes left on the clock, usually. Uh, 10 to 15 minutes left on the clock, and I was never going to put this in with that much time left. Uh, so, uh, unfortunate. So I never cited this card in. Uh, I would probably play, like, Cannon Soldier MK2, or a regular Cannon Soldier, just to be a bit more controlled. Um, specifically probably just regular Cannon Soldier, even though MK2 is a bit more uh, valuable. Um, and it has the same sort of interaction of you can get it off Summon Sorceress. It's just a little bit more niche because you have to have World Legacy World Chalice there. But that's easily doable. Uh, but basically, it was something that, like, it, that's something that, like, instead of throwing my entire board into it with Gandora, um, I could at least, like, pinpoint, like, tribute off certain things and then do a lot more damage than just 25 in a lot more of a uh, controlled manner. At least that is the thought process behind it. But anyway, continuing onward, uh, three copies of Droll and Lockbird, just as, you know, generic good hand traps, and then the third Ash Blossom that was not in my main deck. Uh, these are obviously really good against Goki. Uh, sometimes I'd put them in against Striker just because I want them to end their turn, and then I can kill them. Uh, just things like that. Basically just all that needed to be said. Uh, three copies of Twin Twister, although I'm uh, lending one out right now uh to a friend that needed it for the uh for the upcoming week uh but i played three twin twister and then three red reboot as the uh the last cards in my side deck basically uh not a lot to be said here about these cards these cards are obviously really powerful uh this is just for like alter geists and other trap decks other terrible trap decks uh and then obviously these are same same sort of utilization uh but basically i was really happy with the list the list didn't like uh have any of that the list didn't have that many big uh, problems over the over the weekend. Uh, I made it a lot of rounds. I was able to play almost every game that I actually sat down to play. Uh, but overall, uh, I just didn't have uh, my proper player sense about me. And this was the first event that I ever played in with the new end of match procedures. That's also a huge thing as well. Um, I never played in any regionals, any YCSs or anything since the new end of match procedures went into place because I was taking my, at this point, break from the from the game, even though I thought that I had quit <laughs> for good. <laughs> but, um, but so I'd never played under the new end of match procedures, so I didn't know how to properly, like, respect them uh, with how I was uh, playing. And so I lost three matches to time. And they were, they were all games that I was literally in the process of winning that turn. Like, I was in the process of winning, whether it was OTKing my opponent or setting up a huge board that they couldn't play out of, gumblaring them for four or whatever. If we had had the old end of match procedures, I would have won all three of those um, matches. But unfortunately, that just wasn't the case. But anyway, that is it for this deck profile. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are in the comments down below. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, any of that sort of nonsense. 
uh, ask away in the comment sections down below. Like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do. If you want to see more Yu-Gi-Oh! content, then definitely like the video. If you want to see more content as well from this channel specifically, subscribe if you're new here and haven't already, um, and all that other sort of stuff. I am going to be trying to attend YCS Niagara Falls in Canada in the next month. I do not know if I will be playing this deck, uh, but I don't necessarily think anything from Soul Fusion is going to change the format up too drastically. I'm not too big a believer in Thunder Dragons, how they'll operate um, in terms of being like the bet one of like the best decks. And uh, I don't know if uh, basically the only thing I'm worried about is if like the Danger Support Wave is really good or not. But for Niagara Falls, I think the format is going to stay largely the same as it is currently with what the best decks are and all that sort of nonsense. So, like I said, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time as usual, guys, and take care. I'll see you in the next video.